My name is Nicholas Essendon, and I will present alarm handling in IEC 61850 today. I work at Vattenfall R&D, and I'm also convener of the IEC Working Group on Com Communication for Monitoring and Control of Wind Power Plants. I will hold this presentation together with Giuseppe Rigadello, who works for NL Green Power, and is a member of the IEC Working Group for Hydroelectric Power Plants, Communication for Monitoring and Control. If you allow me to just use a few seconds to present my company, Vattenfall, we are one of Europe's largest utilities. We're 100% owned by the Swedish state and have almost 7 million electricity wholesale customers throughout Europe, which makes us the third largest retailer of electricity in Europe. And we have our power plants dominated in Northern Europe. Uh, but today's topic is an alarm handling. What is an alarm? I think what most people come to think of is probably the fire alarm that you can see at the top left corner. I will make my pointer a little bit more visual here. And we think that this is an alarm that is a deviation or abnormal condition of an equipment function and it's usually accompanied by an audible or visible indication to an operator or a machine. The popular understanding of an alarm is also that it's an event that needs a timely response and with the response we usually mean an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement has been defined as the action by which an operator or a machine confirms recognition of an alarm indication. But as we will see, it's not quite so simple. And why is an alarm handling important? Well, we want to avoid being startled when the unusual event happens, somebody kicking the water bowl of the cat. And we also want to make sure that we don't end up in the sort of situation that this guy on the end, he doesn't panic, that's a good thing, but having 213 new alarms, all of them emergency priority, well, it's not really gonna help you to solve the issue. The field of alarm handling has gained much uh, development after several incidents that happened in the 70s and 80s. I think the most famous one is probably at the Harrisburg uh, nuclear power plant in Three Mile Island. And here afterwards, the alarm system has got much of the blame because the operators were swarmed by information and the crucial information determining what was actually the root cause behind the incidents was hidden by all of the lesser priority alarms. In a substation, specifically in IEC 61850, traditionally what we have called alarm is the output from a trigger. And the triggering is often done with internal logic. Here are some examples of alarms that are defined in the IEC 61850 standard. It can be loss of a signal. It can be a pressure of an insulated gas that has become too high. We also have one or two cases of also warnings and indications being handled as a single point status. The alarm handling is usually propriety in the SCADA. That is here represented by maybe a touch screen where we could see an alarm list and we here we could acknowledge. But normally this would be kept within the SCADA system. There would be no interaction to the alarms that we have acknowledged that in the relay. And we will see that the functionality is relatively limited compared to other standards like ISA 18.2 or IEC 62682. Some of you have probably seen this cartoon here, but it's probably the first time that you actually see 61850 on the little plane and not the big plane. But when it does come to alarm handling, other standards like in industrial automation have much more advanced functionality to handle alarms than we have had traditionally in 61850. I will continue now with the next slide. And we see in the wind domain, we are often using the 61850 standard between the park controller. So maybe it's an offshore wind plant of a few hundred turbines that is communicating with surveillance center. What we see in this image is my company's surveillance center in Esbjerg, Denmark. 
here we have 11 different SCADA systems from different turbine manufacturers, each of them having contact with their turbines. And on top of this one, we need a SCADA on top, which handles uh, alarms from all of the propriety systems. We will have multiple actors in such a scenario, like the park site office. We will have this, this surveillance center, but we will also share information with uh, original equipment manufacturers. And we can have our maintenance staff in another building in each country where we operate. We have actually over the last years mapped over 100,000 signals to 61,425. That is the 61,850 variant for wind. And this is supposed to do analytics. But what we want in the operation is to be able to control all the turbines and do it in the same manner. And that's a quote from the head of the surveillance center in Denmark, Jan Jörgensen. So, we need functionality in alarm handling of varying complexity. The most simple uh, alarm state machine one can imagine is this one, where we have a process that is normal and can go to an alarm state. And it can return back to the normal process if something has happened. It could be a transformer that is overloaded, so it goes hot. And when the night comes, the load goes down, the temperature goes down, and we could be toggling daily between an alarm state for high temperature and other periods of the day in a normal state. A little bit more advanced is the state machine where we have what is called a latch state, the state E here. Here, we can think of a wind turbine that goes warm. Now, something going over this temperature threshold would indicate that there could be a malfunction. So even if the wind stops blowing, we don't want to return to the normal state because there's something we want to inspect and something we might want to fix. So we'll actually stay in the latch state, even though the temperature went down. And next time the wind starts blowing, we toggle between the two states, B and E. And I will show you now a little bit more complicated state machine, but stay calm, don't panic, bear with me, and we'll walk through this state machine as well, which is the fourth state machine that we have included in 61850 for alarm handling. And here's an example. We have at the back of the wind turbine our active cabinet for power distribution. The temperature here has gone high. This means that we go to an alarm state, the B state, and this will be seen by our surveillance center. The operator of the surveillance center will acknowledge this alarm and they will distribute this information to all possible clients that will take care of the fault. I will now move this video screen here and we can see that one of these clients will be the country maintenance staff and they can activate a technician to inspect the turbine. Now again, before the technicians arrive, maybe the wind calms down and the temperature decreases to normal, but the alarm is still active. We are in this state, and we are in this state that is the latch state. The technician will inspect the issue and replace the affected spare parts. After this, the technician will send a reset error command to release the errors and latch. He will probably also document the incident in the reporting system. And the surveillance center has now got information that this turbine is OK to start. So the wind turbine is able to produce again automatically. So in a 61850-90-18, we have solved the alarm handling with data objects. And we can add a data object to any logical node. So an alarm can be placed anywhere in our information model, in any logical node. What distinguishes it as an alarm is that it is of a common data class called type ALM. And we configure this common data class, this data object, to use one of the four state machines. And we can also support uh, more advanced alarm features coming from industrial automation standards like IC62684 for shelving. This is when we have, for example, a broken sensor. We don't want it to be flooding the alarm list because it's broken. We can also suppress, maybe based 
on an operational condition in the plant. When we're in this abnormal state, we don't think it's meaningful to get certain alarms. Or it could be out of service because we're doing maintenance and we're actually testing that sensor. And we know it's going to trigger alarms and we don't want to startle the people in the control room. Let's give you the raw data of some of the attributes of this common data class for alarm handling. We will have a status value, which state of the alarm machine we're in. We will have quality to indicate that the data and so on has been processed correctly. We'll have a timestamp of when the alarm came. We have built this common data class on the control model for 61850. So we have also here information about a sequence ID originator, and we can have a control number. This is inherited from the control that we use when we open a breaker, for example. We have some additional timestamp information. We can have the kind of the alarm model displayed, a priority is this, this alarm should come high up in our list. We have many alarms. If it comes from a specific area in a plant, we can have some messages text that we might want to display to the end user. And we can have some default before we see the alarm or a time setting that comes in so that we don't get the alarm re-triggered every millisecond. And we can also reference to a group of data that could have the information that's triggering the alarm. It becomes also very important to count alarms. We like to do a lot of counting in the wind domain. So we will be counting the state changes and the duration of a state. How often and for how long has a turbine been stopped due to an alarm? And we will maybe also want to have this in 61850. And there we will use a separate common data class, a counter, and we can count the number of times we've been in each state since commissioning. And if we want to know what's happened the last day or the last 10 minutes, we can use a functionality in 61850 that's been there since the first edition of 61850, which is statistical logical nodes. And this can then have a subset of information of all of the state changes and duration of each alarm state that we had for, say, the last day or 10 days. In the 90-18 part of 61850, we have also included uh, different architectures, functional allocations. We think that normally the alarm will be triggered by an IC61850 signal, which could be an event that is reported. It could be a goose message or it could be polled. And the client which subscribe to this and include an alarm handler. And this alarm handler will then put us in the different alarm stains and it will expose the 61850 alarm to other clients. We could also imagine here that we have the alarm handler functionality, the alarm server built into the relay itself, into the IED, and a client could directly see the alarm states for the different alarms without an independent alarm entity. But in a wind plant with 100 turbines, you would probably have a dedicated uh, computer, central computer handling the alarms. But in other scenarios, you may want to distribute this along the alarms. So this is a complex figure. We have tried to show in this figure the different possibilities with non-61850 alarms or the alarms in the IED and different possibilities to have clients uh, handling the alarm server in different configurations. So with that, I want to draw your attention to the information that I have shown today. It has been circulated end of last year to the national committees in IEC. And we will be circulating a final update of this uh, work that we have done at the end of February 2021. Now we will show you a bit more about the alarm handling, how it's used in the hydro power plants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Giuseppe Rigavello, CTO of company Enier. I am a member of ICTC57 Working Group 18 for Hydro Modeling. I'm working with Inner Green Power, and on its behalf, I will continue uh, this presentation, introducing alarm use cases in the hydro domain and the tests we've carried out on the coming 6150 alarm model in close collaboration with the uh, Canadian utility Hydro Quebec. 
So let me just some essential figures about Intergreen Power, one of the biggest private utility worldwide, which has an international presence in the hydro generation field. Here we can see the highly mixed hydro fleet located mostly in Italy, Spain, Northern Amer uh, Latin America. And this broad range of installations corresponds to quite a significant ballet of technological uh, technological solutions for automation and control systems and control room systems also and this enriches uh, Anna's experience and skills in tackling the upcoming digitalization challenges in order to better understand the context where uh, this work is allocated this slide introduces the Anna's data model project company-wide, worldwide project, which is constituting the backbone for the digitalization of the renewable assets in Serbia. Enel is right now uh, deeply committed in the deployment of the Nitro data model based on IC6150 and ISO IEC81346 standards. In this context, in automation and control aspects like alarm angling play a crucial role in modeling process uh, since uh, functional decomposition and system breakdown at field level allow unique and homogeneous identification uh, of information all over the uh, data chain the so-called data chain from the field up to the control and monitoring systems. So, in this state, the chain, let's go uh, through hydro requirements for alarm and click. Okay? So, first of all, uh, in our experience, the distribution of the alarm management by means of alarm entities, the ones that we saw before, is really highly valuable. This allows a flexible and efficient decentralization of alarm handling and moreover reduces the corresponding resources and efforts which are needed at central level where we have this proprietary SCADA systems that we already see, that we already have seen before. On the second hand, for a consistent and error-free handling of alarm configuration, one and just one point of engineering is for sure an added value. The alarm entity can be specified once, and this specification can be consistently spread over all recipients in the data chain. In this aspect, 6150 SCL uh, represents the proper formal machine readable specification. Okay, so another very important issue for hydro domain is classification of alarms. According IC62682, classification separates alarms into classes based on different criteria. Priority classes correspond to a set of reactions which comprise for sure human interaction um, in terms of annunciation, acknowledgement, events like we saw before, but some high severity priorities lead to additional automatic responses by the control system itself, uh, including various types of shutdown sequences and preventing unit uh, from further operation until operator gets to the power plant and resets it. A very important feature for hydro alarm model is the possibility to specify and configure such priority assignment, even dynamically. As we've seen before in the presentation, uh, in, the, in the description of ALM common data class, 6150 alarm model is fit for that by means of suited attributes. So due to huge availability of information 
in modern hydro control and monitoring systems, control centers are often overwhelmed by nuisance alarms. Uh, a set of techniques that can support the management of such flooding situation in terms of annunciations is for sure necessary and important grouping of alarms with common associations uh, is one of the very basic rationalization technique. It's widely adopted in hydro. Uh, the grouping concept uh, can uh, evolve further to advanced masking of unnecessary information. For instance, identifying first up event or correlating subsequent events. Okay, uh, for a better for a better uh, situation, situational awareness. 6150 alarm model supports utilities and manufacturers uh, in the implementation of such techniques, enabling also adoption of sophisticated alarm processing functionalities at the plant supervision level. Uh, control systems are uh, the closest interface to the process. They manage and monitor plant conditions and states at the, as a, to the best timely manner. Only at the ID level is possible to capture some fault information correctly, the proper timestamp and related information. Mm. Therefore, it's useful that the ID application can transmit an abnormal condition together together with this additional information dynamically, providing the operator with reference to alarm sources or additional adaptive information, as recommended by 62682. Uh, so in, in this example, the governor pump is intended to recover the oil quantity inside the accumulator tank at a certain level. When the pump is not able to perform this functionality any longer, an increased rate of change in the level measurement can be observed. And the generic pump abnormal behavior can be more significantly annunciated to the operator in the HMI together with, with its uh, additional information. Yeah? Avoiding awkward reconstruction of the event by means of findings and recordings and event lists. These additional values are driven directly by the application from the controller and they are appended to the alarm message in a very effective way. Okay, so we went through some typical hydro applications and use cases regarding alarm handling. Now we would like to show you a live demo of a prototype alarm annunciator based on 6250 alarm model. Uh, this mocap has been developed jointly by Hydro Quebec and Anya and is intended just to be a proof of concept of the 6150 alarm handling approach. Okay. The 6150 alarm model doesn't use any particular service uh, nor communication feature, uh, but just the existing AXI model. Mm -hmm. So we concentrated on the alarm functionality itself. We implemented the whole server client on an open source web-based environment, okay, uh, with no particular uh, mappings to uh, to the communication protocol. So uh, the ID is simulated by a Node-RED application where the Ansiator web server is also implemented. The client is a pure HTML5 web browser. The data exchange uh, takes place. Uh, via REST API communication, in this case, okay, WebSocket and HTTP POST requests, okay. The payload is JSON formatted, okay. Um, alarm entities are uh, simulated real time, okay. These are this green block here; they are represented by these green blocks. 
uh, in the node red environment. Okay, so uh, we trigger the 6150 uh, alarm state machine inside uh, the entities, simulating uh, binary process events. Okay, um, we are forcing them in the simulator. They could come on the, uh, in other cases by connectors, for example, from process directly from process. Okay. We will see, uh, uh, let's say, two alarm stories. Okay, one hydro and another one wind. On the hydro domain, we get back to the uh, hydraulic pumping unit that we saw for the turbine governor. Uh, here we have an oil filter, uh, which is monitored by a differential pressure switch. Okay. Uh, and this will uh, give us an indication of the filter clogged. Okay, so uh, we have an alarm entity which is uh, issuing an, uh, an HPU filter clock message to an alarm client in the plant HMI. Okay, so here we go with the demo. So here is the uh, POC platform, the POC environment. Here we have the node red application. Uh, we see uh, the alarm entities blocks. Okay, like this. These these are the simulation. Uh, triggers uh, and uh, the rest of the blocks are uh, an infrastructure for handling the communication towards the web clients. Uh, here is the instance of the web server. Okay, so uh, in the entity blocks, I can even uh, set some configuration in the 6950 alarm model. For example, the priority, the type of alarm. In this case, since it's an hydro application, we have just the acknowledgement mechanism and uh, further, uh, further settings like description of the message, additional messages, dynamic message, messages, and so on. Okay, and this is the server side, and here. I just prepare a client side with a normal web browser. Okay, so uh, uh, the ID now gets an indication that the filter is clocked, the simulated ID. So I get an indication and this causes the web server to transmit a message to the client. The filter is clocked. And and this is done by means of the 6950 uh, uh, alarm model. Okay. The operator gets to the power plant and can acknowledge. And this acknowledge command is again one part of the 6950 alarm model. And this is a control to the alarm entity which reacts changing the state on the state machine. As soon as the situation gets normal state, the indication disappears too. Okay, so uh, what is really uh, tricky in this is that the whole communication, the whole information exchange has been uh, developed by means of the 6150 alarm model as a data model. Okay, okay, so now I just present uh, the second mm -hmm. case, which we already seen. Uh, uh, we, we have already got a description from uh, Nicholas before. So in this case, we have the cabinet to high temperature, okay, which is going to two clients. So we have a second client here which is representing the surveillance center. We go now to the indication that the temperature is too high and we can stimulate it and see the ID server is issuing the indication to the two clients. In this case, the surveillance center is acknowledging it and this is transmitted to the server back to the other clients. So even in the Again, in the in the power house, in the power plant, this will be in the wind plant, this will be 
uh, received. And after the after the situation gets back to normal state, it's possible now for the operator to reset it. Okay, this was a short uh, demonstration that the principle is working. So uh, now we get to the conclusions. Today we have given background to the use of alarm handling in both wind and hydro domains. With the POC demonstration, we wanted to show that the IC 6.1590-18 alarm handling is a consistent, ready solution that can be directly implemented. The 6150 extension has been made in close alignment, also with state-of-the-art uh, standards for alarm handling in industry automation and other industry domains. Uh, the 6150 alarm model is future-proof and enables further development of enhanced and advanced alarm management techniques. It fits well the needs also for substation scale assistance, and we hope it will be quickly adopted in the market because utilities need it. Okay. Okay. So I also invite you to keep your eye on 6.15-90-18 for alarm handling. And I warmly thank you for attention too. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video insightful and enjoyable. We post new Smart Grid related videos every Friday at 12 CET. So please go ahead and subscribe and let colleagues in other departments and peers in other organizations know so that they can benefit too. We welcome your feedback, so if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them below. Thanks again and have a great day.